Thanks for tuning in to the Transformation Ministry. I am your hostess, JC Prophetess B, aka the Truth Hacker, coming to you live from the Transformation Room, the Transformation Room of Ministry. Amen, amen. And as always, I am delighted to fellowship with you and deliver what the Spirit of the Lord has sent me to deliver unto you. And tonight we're going to invoke the spirit of intercession. We're going to open it up and I want to I want to share with you something that the spirit has enlightened me about intercession and how we intercede throughout life without even recognizing the intercession that we are called to. Amen. This one is going to bless you for sure. Um if you are before the Lord and you are an intercessor which Believe it or not, we all are if we are fully converted and committed. And even before we become fully converted and committed, we are in intercession. We just have not been identified as the intercessor that we have been called to intercede for. Amen, amen. So stay with me and um, I'm going to try to get this message to you as quickly but as thoroughly as possible. Um. So, did you know that intercession that you are called to is not just an intercession of verbal prayer, but it's also an intercession of spiritual battle in and for the church? Now, I know that we all have our revelation and interpretation of intercession, and I just want to take you to a place of intercession that the Lord has revealed to me that um, I personally haven't heard. And I don't know if you have, but I'm I'm sharing this with you because it should enlighten something in you as well. So the reason why I say that we are an intercession of spiritual battle for the church is this. <sighs> Man, this is, I, I, I wrote, I'm trying to see where uh, can I start? Uh, okay. So one, one thing I will say, and I'm going to use myself as the intercessor and the example that the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me was that um, I was molested by a minister of the pulpit, right? And that separated me from the church. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Um, I received the Holy Spirit at uh, 10 years old with the evidence of speaking in tongue. And you can say I was what you call a spiritual secret agent, right? The Lord has strategically placed his spirit in me to carry through the world. You understand me? At 10 years old, the Lord placed his spirit in me. I was speaking in tongues with the evidence of speaking in tongues for hours. And he strategically did this in me so that I can carry his spirit. Now, I carried the spirit of the Lord through the world so that I can get it back to the church. To give it back to him through his church and by doing so... I am able to get the full understanding of the church of God in Christ by his spirit, okay? And this is because I was one of the first children in the region to carry the spirit of God for the church, understand me? And this affords me the right to understand the intercession of the church. And this is what I want to talk to you about tonight the intercession of the church. This message is will be one of the most important messages you will hear. And it is an evangelistic call to those that are called to the church. It's an evangelistic call for the church because I want I want to say something to you. Um I don't um I'm trying to find the verbiage to relay the message. So I'm just going to just uh, let it flow 
and then we'll we'll differentiate and decipher what we need to cipher accordingly. So for for many years, I wonder as a child why I was treated the way I was treated. Why was I misplaced? Why was I placed in foster home? Why was I molested? Why was I separated from my family? Why I was never received to be attached to a family? Why I had to make my own families um, within the world that I live of, of life? Why did, why, it, there were so many whys that I can't describe all of the whys. Now, I'm only sharing this so that Maybe you can understand some of your whys. This is so, this is a little far out. But if you will allow the spirit of the spirit to open up your understanding, then you will be able to receive what I'm about to say to you about this intercession. So the, the Lord has been revealing to me about the church. And interceding on behalf of the church. So what the Lord has revealed is that when I was molested as a child, it was an intercession as a communication by the spirit from which I carry, which provoked spiritual things to attack me. Because I was carrying the spirit of holiness, the spirit of God in me and not being nurtured or, or knowing how to grow it, how to mature in it. And there was no one to show me those things. So it brought about and attracted spiritual things to me. And we know spiritual beings operate through people. So being that I, I did not have the nurturing of how to nurture the true spirit of God, there were things attached or even, I believe even if I did know, these things are still attached and comes with the spirit of housing the spirit of God anyway, because that's just the way life is, right? With that being said, listen. My molestation, my separation from the church, my um, uh, separation into a foster home um, as, as the form of adoption, um, my not being able to fit in anywhere I went was all a part of, uh, oh, oh, one more thing, and, and me being touched and fondled by a minister of the pulpit, all of these things were about my life were for intercession of the church. As a child in your purest state, you wonder how could such things happen to you? You're not even, I wasn't even fully developed. I had no boobs. I had no butt. I had nothing to develop, to attract those type of, of natural um, thoughts or sightings that would attract a man. That's what I thought. But what I had was a spiritual being inside of me that attracted the spirit of what was inside of them, right? Stay with me. This was a sign and communication of God communicating what was happening to his church. At, even though at that time I was at a young age, as a future prophet, I was interceding on behalf of the church. The Lord was communicating through his spirit in my life because I was carrying his spirit, everything that was separating him from the church. The molestation was saying that the church has been molested. The church has been fondled. The adoption I went through was saying that he he placed us, uh, he, he set us forward to be adopted. So I went through the ad adopting process to say that we are adopted by the spirit of God. Then I went through uh, of the leader uh, being perverted to say that those in the pulpit 
were hiding behind the preaching and the word of God, but they were secret perverts. They were perverted. They were molesting and fondling and sleeping with the God's children in the church. Oh my goodness. I don't know if, if somebody can understand me, right? Then as far as the separation from family and friends and people, because even prior to me getting to the foster home, I was touched by a stepbrother, which was of the world. So it really was really saying to me that I had to be separated. So, but in me being separated from the things and people and because of things and places, I began to separate myself from the church. In separating from the church today, the Lord has revealed that this was all a part of my process of intercession to say that these are the things that has separated the church from God, molestation, perversion, uh, uh, in incest, uh, family, uh, friends, your own thoughts, your misunderstanding, your misinterpretation, because the, the thought of, of someone doing those things um, put me in the mindset to be against the pastors, against leaders. So I would, would, would avoid the church because I thought that th these people were hiding and the church wasn't right. When really those in leadership were not right. However, it was a part of my intercession of the Lord communicating what was happening to his church. Now, I'm not saying it's okay for somebody to rape you. And I'm not saying it's okay for somebody to molest you. But what I want you to know is this. Every spirit that happens of evil, there has to have been a spirit of good once there. There cannot be a lie unless the truth was once revealed. So there cannot be evil and molestation unless good and, and proper righteousness of love was there. Discipline was there. Discipleship was there. Father of the church was there. So in order for it to be manipulated and distorted and contaminated, it had to want to be clean. Now, the only way God can bring something in the earth to be clean is through the pureness uh -huh, of a child. And if you notice, the scripture said, in order for us to receive the kingdom of God, we, has to, we have to come as a child. So I, as a child, was coming to the Lord, seeking the Lord, and received the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, me, me receiving that, me receiving that, uh, the spirit of the Lord already knew that there was no one at that time to groom me or to grow me and mature me into the things of God because of the state of where I was already living in. And the time, there was no such thing as children carrying or even obtaining the Holy Spirit by the evidence of speaking in tongues. So this is why today the Lord has revealed to me that this was not just you tarrying by the evidence of speaking in tongues. I had to go through my process of interceding. The Lord strategically placed his spirit in me for me to go through the process of the world. It's just like the Lord said, I overcame the world. So what could the world do to you? Do not be fearful and worthy of the world because I overcame the world. That's what the spirit of the Lord says. So it's the same thing what I'm saying to you. He housed his spirit in me to carry, to say, go through the world and bring my spirit back to me. There is a, a trial, a intercession, a thing, a process that we all must go through. No matter what the story is of your life, it is an intercession. So for example, um, we were talking about today about the need and about the desire. There, there was a time where the church was in sincere need of the Lord. So he sent someone that was in intercession to carry the need of his spirit. I hope that somebody is getting this today because I want you to know that what has happened to you before you got to God, 
or even why you're in God has to do with your intercession of the church. If you take and look at your life, it's always what we've been through that God sends us back to, to tell them they can come out. And if you just take a moment and think about everything you've been through, it's happening in the church today. Now, mine was 30 something years ago. The seed was planted. Now it is actually outwardly happening. I was molested and behind closed doors and hidden. I didn't even tell. Be, and, and it was by a, a, a minister, a pastor, a minister of the pulpit. So this seed was already being planted to now it's grown in a stage of not hiding anymore. You understand where they're no, the seed is no longer molesting kids. It's now grown. So it's actually coming out to have sex with those that's sitting in the pews. Do you understand? But it's still a molestation spirit because the true spirit of God does not put a man or woman of God in the seat of a pulpit to go and fondle and sleep with those of his children that he has sent to them. Are we clear on this message tonight? I want to say to you that although things may have happened to you in life, it is your spirit of intercession to let you know what, what part of the church, of the body of the spirit of Christ you are called to that has separated your time of the church of the people of God from God. The true church of God in Christ is the intercession of the spirit by which the things that you suffer that you can overcome to bring God's people back to God. Now, I had to carry this thing as a child trying to always wonder how I was going to get back to that spiritual place. Because my life didn't line up to anything of God from that time moving on. As so much came against me, I couldn't understand what was happening. So much went on, I didn't want to even deal with the church. To be honest, because I was afraid to get close and trust anybody in leadership because I thought that they were nasty and deceitful. So I would go in already looking for it. Already. You preaching the word, I, I'm scanning you. I'm looking for any any type of thing that's going to say, mm -hmm, there it go, there it go. However, what I didn't know was, uh, be, was not time for me to know because I had to get to this place today, this spiritual place today. I had to go through the process of being reborn again because I, I became a backslider. Mm-hmm. So I had to go through the process to being reborn again, learning the spiritual things, being mentored, getting in position and getting back to God so I can carry the same spirit that he placed, strategically placed in me to carry in the earth to get back to the earth of his church, which to give it back to him. When I say church, I'm not talking about one individual. I'm talking about the body of Christ. We all make up the body of Christ by the spirit that the Lord has housed through us or in us. If you do not have the spirit of God in you yet, then you cannot know this thing that I am speaking to you. I am speaking to those who have gone through the process of life and has transformed or in transitioning of into their new life in Christ. And this is why, again, we are due a new life because in the new life, you understand why you had to go through the old life. And even with understanding that until the one that has carried the spirit by which such has come as me today, these things cannot be revealed because it was only revealed to me. Here it is 30 something over 30 something years later that. I was seeking the Lord about some things that were separating me. And I, I was trying to understand why such spirits have come about, why such things have happened and, and how can certain people be in certain places after doing certain things and what makes me, me, what, how did I be get, begin to be what God has called me to be? What is my relationship with God? 
And, and when going through my life and rooting up things and people and places and, and motives and, and things I did and understanding who I was, it let me understand. God said that this was really just an intercession. This was a call to intercession. But you cannot understand the call to intercession until you become to God to reveal your true identity of who you are. If you're still in the world, you're not over or in intercession. You're, I had to come out of it to now get into the spirit and die to the things of the world to understand what was my process and my duties and my assignment in the world. My assignment was to get God, go take God's spirit, house it, carry it as a secret agent from a child. Grow with it. Grow, go out into the world. Get through the process of doing the things in the world and get my spirit back to me. Get it back to me so that my church can have it. So even though I carry the spirit that God strategically placed in me, it was not for me. It was for his church, for those who he called to this particular spirit. This particular time right now is what I housed and what I carry for the Lord at that time. So I'm saying to you, what you have been through has not been for nothing. Your suffering has not been for nothing. It is a call to intercession. If you go back after you see this message and look at everything over your life or anyone that you know that has come through ministry, you will see that the same thing that they've been through is the same thing that separated them or someone of their era of time from the church or within the church. The fight that you have with your pastor. Watch it and understand that Although you're going through the process of the fight, it really is what you came through, what may be in your bloodline, what may be in your life um, as baggage, but it also goes with what's happening and what's separating through the church. So it's like God is killing two, what is it? How they go? you killing two birds with one stone. You and your life go through certain things through natural bloodline and generational relationship. But what you go through in your natural bloodline and generational relationship also represents a intercession for the church when you get fully converted and committed. So for myself, I didn't have um, parents of my own to raise me. I didn't have a father. What does the spirit say? Leave your mother and father and cleave to me. The church does not have the mother and father, the truth and good of God, because they have left the place where they found God. So, and that, so now this has separated them from God. So the church does not have the, the true father, the true mother of God in the church. Okay. I am not married, right? I've been, um, in the spirit of celibacy for six and a half years. Why? The church has been not married to God. I'm just showing you myself as an intercession that what I really thought was all about, let's say me or my life, really was a form of intercession for the spirit of the true church of God in Christ. And I want to say to you that everything that you're going through, your process is your process, but it's also not only generational and bloodline for you that you're going through, it's also for the spirit of the church. Everything you're going through has also separated the church from God. There is many of us and there's many things. Mine, I carry many different things that um, also represented the things that separated God from the church. Perversion is a big one. Perversion is huge right now in the church that separated people from God. It's huge. So in my spirit of celibacy, God is saying, this is why you have to be celibate to intercede on behalf of the church. I cannot move in a perverted church. 
my God, today. I, I, it's like I'm married to God because the church won't marry God. Okay. It's like, um, um, how can I say it? It's like, I really receive and, and form conform to what my father says because the church is not listening. Now, although all these things, of course, has been operating in my natural bloodline in my life. So let's not forget that I'm not saying that this does not have also an impact on my life and from my life personally as generationally in bloodline. Yes, it does. But what I'm saying is that it, that is there. But when you convert to the spirit of God, now you can see that even what you went through in your bloodline and generationally also converts and relates to and you is used as an intercession for the church of God and Christ by the spirit of God. My God to them. Listen, I didn't write this up. So I don't even know how this is coming across. But I, I pray that that uh, that is not about how um, it's put together as far as the form of, of, of speech. But by the spirit of the spirit that you will understand what I am saying to you by the spirit of truth, by the spirit of intercession, by the spirit of someone who has carried the spirit all these years strategically as a secret agent for the Lord to get it back to his church. It was a process I had to go through. There were times where I was almost dead in the world. And I'm thinking, why are they trying to kill me? What's happening? Because it was about me not being able to get here tonight to tell you that don't be fooled. Your life, the song says, your life is not our own. Our life is not our own. Don't we sing it? To you I belong, but we don't understand. Our life is really not our own. Even when you're not fully committed and converted by default, you are still in intercession because before you became in the womb, right? I knew you before I was in my mother womb. Don't we all repeat that? How can you have been known? How can you have been known before you was in your mother womb unless you was a spirit first? I'm going to leave that right there. But I wanted to just reference that so you can understand. Every one of us has an intercession. It's just that we haven't, maybe the other carriers, such like myself, hasn't got to this point so that it can be revealed. Or maybe they don't understand. Maybe I had to reveal it so that they can come out to understand what they interceded for and what they carried from childhood on up. I'm not the only one. I just know I was one of the first ones because that's what the Lord revealed to me. And I know that in that time, they didn't even know how to deal with me when I received the Holy Spirit because it was so unexpected that a child will tarry and receive the Holy Spirit. My God, today, I'm, I'm honored that the Lord will would, would even place his spirit in me. I'm honored. Although I went through hell and high waters. But guess what? I made it here to get this message to you. And it was a process. And I'm just saying don't take for granted your process because you are an interceder. Interceder does not just mean you're going to be praying by verbal communication of words of prayer. It's a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. The spirit of God is eternal life. My God. So I pray that tonight you understand the spirit of intercession that I've come to introduce or open you up to a new uh, new enlightenment of understanding what your life is really all about. Everything that you go through, I promise you, if you just sit down and think about it and think about the church that you're in, Think about the time that the church is in right now, the state of the church. And you will find yourself knowing that you've been separated. You, your life is, is communicating what has separated the church, either your personal church or 
the general foundation of the church from God. I promise you, whether you be a man or woman, you will be able to see this because it is the spirit that has released this. There's no way that I can even find such things in my mind. It's no way. It's no way. The spirit has revealed this and I'm grateful and I'm grateful to share it with you. I'm grateful to get this off of me. I've been carrying it for a long time and I got it to where it needed to go to because I I got what I needed in order to do that. So I had to get it to, I had to carry it so that when I got to the place that I needed to be, I was able to release God's spirit back to his spirit. And then his spirit was released to me so that I can go on through the spirit to now get right here with you. I'm just telling you, I'm encouraging somebody tonight to say those things may have happened, but God has not forgotten about you. God did not do those things to you. And when we live in the world and we are uncovered, those things are um, places of opportunity for these such things to happen. But because we were not properly covered, and because we didn't understand and because it was done to us in wrongness, when we be fully converted and committed, God gets the glory by overturning it. Now it becomes intercession. Oh, somebody understand me today. And because it becomes intercession, it is accounted to you as power, authority, dominion. You can cast those things out. My God today. Listen, I, I'm appreciative for this moment and I feel good even being able to release it. And again, I apologize if it's not formal, but it's spiritual and it's, it's healthy food and it's, it's, it's peculiar food and it's for you to understand you. Take it back to the Lord so he can open it up more for you. Because again, there is no way that I can even comprehend such communication by the spirit that was released to me. And I received the message for myself first and ate from it first. And I'm eating from it while I'm talking to you so that I can, as my apostles say, break bread with you. So be blessed and I will see you soon. Stay tuned then. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share the video, um, share it with everybody because this is an intercession that needs to be discussed. <laughs>